Yes, when I was a kid, I was observing like how my German colleagues at that time were flying to space. But for me, that was so far. I thought like you need to be a Superman, which I clearly wasn't. So I never started to dream as a kid that I wanted to become an astronaut. And only in 2008, when ESA announced there will be an astronaut selection, it's then when I started to dream about becoming an astronaut. So for me, it's the dream of an adult. So the astronaut training usually is uh, in several phases. We have the basic training. So when people come and uh, are hired to become astronaut, they have a different background. So we need to train them <coughs> to become all on the same level. And then once after one year, when the basic training is over, we have a training which increases the knowledge on the space station. You learn how a rocket works and uh, you learn how to dive and uh, because we need diving for spacewalk training. And then your mission is assigned to you and then you learn specifically what you need for your flight. So I flew on a Falcon 9 rocket in a Dragon and I learned how to fly in a Dragon. I didn't learn how to fly in a Soyuz capsule. My colleague who flew in a Soyuz, they only learned the Soyuz. So flying to space was for me like a dream come true and the space station it's actually a very very big station and um, since we are floating in zero gravity the small modules inside they are so much bigger and uh, because you can work on the ceiling you can float to the wall and so you can make use of the of the entire volume and so even if you think it's a small module here on the earth in space it, it for your eyes and your appearance it's much much bigger and so uh, there was enough space for all of us and um, we had six months um, there was never a moment where we thought like oh, okay this is getting too small and i feel claustrophobic i want to get out of here i want to go home we also have a good way to keep contact with the family we can call on the phone any time that I want, I can call my family. And on the weekend, I can also have a video conference with my family. And then I can see my family and they can see me. Yeah. So during my six months in space, I took part in more than 100 experiments. And there are a lot of experiments in life sciences. So like um, medicine, where I um, am a test subject myself because my body changes in, in flight. My muscles degrade, my bones degrade. And so I need to do a lot of sports to keep my body fit. And we have a lot of equipment where we test my health status, my eyes change, my immune system changes, my fluid distribution in the body changes. A lot happens with the human body and we, uh, we test all this. Another subject where we look into research is material science engineering. If we talk about innovation here on the ground for us, uh, around 70% of innovation comes because of new materials being used. And up in the space station we have a lot of furnaces where we can melt different metals. So we can metals melt them slowly or fast and in different forms and we can study it, we can learn a lot and then we get parameters that we feed into a computer system and then we can simulate new alloys here on the ground. Other experiments are uh, chemistry. Uh, for example, we have combustion experiments because we want to get always um, our space engines being more efficient and we want to burn the last drop of fuel that we have in the satellites but also in the rocket. So we need to study how a flame um, works in space. A, a flame burns differently in space in zero gravity. We have experiments with fluid science. Fluids flow a little bit different in zero gravity. And so that is very interesting to study this phenomena. We can learn a lot for a lot of different processes here on the ground. And um, one of the most um, important experiments that I did was I mixed concrete. You know, concrete, this year, all around me is concrete. It's a material that we have been using for hundreds of years. But a lot of uh, people don't know that by producing concrete, we produce 7.2% of all the carbon dioxide emissions. So making concrete has a lot of contribution to climate change. It's a stronger impact than aviation worldwide. And so by improving this material, we can reduce hopefully uh, our CO2 emissions and can contribute um, to slow down our climate change. As an astronaut, we have several dreams. So the first dream is flying to space. The second one is open the door and step outside to a spacewalk. Those dreams I have already fulfilled. And the third dream that I have is flying to the moon. 
Flying to the moon is a wish that every astronaut has, um, but not all of us can fly to the moon. Every one of us usually gets two missions, so I have a second mission hopefully upcoming. Um, I cross my fingers that it's direction to the moon, but maybe I will fly again to the International Space Station. That would also be a very, very nice gift for me. My opinion is we need to learn uh, quite a lot of technology and improve the technology before we can fly to Mars. Um, in the year 2040, we are planning to fly to Mars. Uh, but you can fly already to Mars with today's technology. But uh, if you fill the rocket and fly to Mars, then uh, you, you need to bring all the food for almost two years and the fuel for flying out and back. And so you don't have any room left for experiments, for science. And I don't want to fly to Mars to put a flag in the ground and say, we were here, topic solved, and let's go home. No, if we fly to Mars, we should stay there and do a lot of science and research. And in order to do so, we need to have a rocket that flies us to Mars, but then on Mars, we produce water to drink, we produce air that we can breathe, we produce all the energy that we need, solar energy, but we also need to be able to build our house and that is using mass soil, the sand on the mass, and 3D printed. And all this stuff, all this technology, we need to test first, and that's why we want to fly to the moon. To test all this on the moon, if it doesn't work on the moon, we can fly back in a few days, no problem. On Mars, it's so far away, if it doesn't work there, we have a big problem. So tomorrow, for a lot of uh, young uh, Portuguese students, a dream will come true. Like being in a parabolic flight is the closest you can get to being an astronaut living in space for six months like me. And for them, this will have a huge impact for their entire career, for their entire life. They will be so inspired that they don't even know what will be uh, happen to them. Um, they will be like good ambassadors for the future, for space. And my message to all the kids who are back home and have not a chance to fly to, to zero gravity tomorrow, you have to have big dreams, because only if you have a big dream, you can fulfill a big dream. And if you can dream it, usually you can also do it.